Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Tonight we are going ahead and doing a pool test with the Novotix Mito underwater ROV submarine. This thing does have the um, floating buoy. So we're gonna power this whole thing up, throw it in the water and just see how the controls are working. So this is gonna be fun. Go ahead and stay tuned and let's get started with the Mito. Okay, so if you guys missed the unboxing, go ahead and check. I'll have the link pop up here. And you can also check this stuff in the description as well for more links on that playlist. Let's just go ahead and start with a quick connection here. Let's just see how fast it takes to set this thing up. So we want to get the kind of the tether unraveled a little bit. And we want to plug straight into the submarine first. This is the first thing. And this one has this nice stainless steel little latches it comes with. And we just go ahead and connect that to the um, little anchor point right there. Connect that too so we have a nice solid connection. I really like how they have this all in one. Don't need any extra parts and it's ready to go. Let's turn on the power here. So we look underneath, we have this kind of slide latch power on. Close the bottom up. Then we're just letting it sit there and we're waiting for the light to flash and that ring goes white. So this one's ready to go. We lift this up, that's the antenna, and check out what happens. So we have our power light going on, and then we have it transmitting Wi-Fi, and if you listen to it, it actually has a fan inside there. It is fully waterproof, but there is a fan cooling, I guess, the processor. Then all we're doing is we're holding power for the controller. Seeing some green lights pop up there. So sub, then the wireless buoy, then the controller. Then we wanna make sure we have this, uh, the correct USB adapter from the controller. This is a direct connection to the phone. And we wanna start the Novatix app. Plug in the cell phone, give it a solid plug in, and then we have allow Novatix to access. Okay, apparently you have to do that every time. On the bottom we have this connecting button, so we wanna wait. And there we go. So we are connected. And then if you go in actually into here, there are those three dots on the top, those options. You can actually pick your control modes from here. I'm just gonna leave it in mode three, I guess. Measurement, you can choose Imperial or metric. I'm in the US, I like my Imperial. Then you have your system information ready to go. All we do is go start diving. And we're just waiting for the image. There we go. So there is our video. As you can see, a little more laggy than a lot of the subs we're used to. Hopefully they can update that because I am noticing that that's kind of an issue with this one so far. I have everything maxed out. All the speeds are maxed out. Um, just my yaw speed, I left it at 30%. So we'll see how that is. We're ready to go. All we need to do is put this thing in the water. So we'll dunk it in here. No problem lifting it from the tether because that thing can handle. We'll just do some uh, zooming around without this in the water and then we'll We'll throw it in the water. Kind of cool with this one, you can actually lock off your tether with this other clip. So say you didn't want to let more tether out, you can just lock it off right here. You could also anchor this to your boat or the shore. It has a nice hole on each, each side, so you can go ahead and put a clip and anchor the whole tether on the shore if you really wanted to. To unlock the motors, we press Y. There we go, wow. <laughs> it just dove down. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on these lights. Oh wow, so it's asking to um, access my location now. So I'm gonna turn on the lights by pressing the B button here. And while that's on, I'm gonna turn off this big spot like here so we can kind of see the submarine lights. Wow, look how stable this thing is. Okay, so this thing doesn't have any joystick. It has like two round thumb pads. And I'm just kind of pushing forward. Like if you've ever if you've ever seen that um, uh, steam controller, it's kind of like that, where there's no joysticks. It's just like slide, your thumbs just slide around on it. This thing is really stable. So that's maximum yaw rate. Let me see if I can turn the um, lights up a little higher. There we go, okay. So you only can have it on the first setting, the low setting, if you're out of the water. But now that I'm in the water and it can sense it, 
that's pretty cool. I can turn the lights on higher. Look at that. So that's 100%. Man, this thing is really good at holding its depth. Look at this. <laughs> One of the best I've seen. Okay, so I'm going to go into settings, and I do want to change the control for the yaw speed. I want to maybe bring it up to 60. It was defaulted at 30. Bring it up to about 60. Going to hit save on that back again and then we'll start diving again that's cool that it kind of left the lights on and everything it didn't like disconnect it from the sub a lot of uh, subs do that where if you go back out to the main interface they disconnect but this one didn't so that's pretty cool so up and down with my left thumb I'm just sliding it on this thing going up and down and did you see that as I went to the surface the lights actually uh, dimmed by themselves so that was pretty interesting let's get the lights up again let's see if i do that again if i go up yeah wow so they dim right at about one foot and that's just to keep the whole system cool in there must be some major processing going on so this is a 60 percent yaw rate there's the lights we can see there and keep in mind, guys, this thing only has two vertical motors. There's one in the front, one in the back, and there's none on the sides like some of the other new subs have out now. Um, so you're not going to have any roll stabilization, really. But in calm water, it doesn't really matter, it looks like. Look at that. Wow. So I just touched the bottom of the pad. And there goes the lights again. So let's go down, and it looks like it's always in depth lock. So no matter where you go... It's cool. You just go down, let off the thumbstick. Let's go ahead and go forward. Now this is going to be its full speed, guys. And let's just see how it keeps its... Wow. It keeps its depth perfectly. This is on par with that. Remember the V6? The uh, QYC V6 was just phenomenal like this as well. So full yaw to the left, and that's full forward. And just look how smooth this thing is. Ooh, just hit the metal post of the pool. Yikes. Okay, so this is definitely, I didn't think it was going to be this stable. This is really shocking to me. I want to go ahead and turn this up even more. So I'm going to go to my max yaw. So I have 100 now across the board on all the control settings. You can also limit your depth, your pitch angle, and all that stuff if you wanted to. So... You have a lot of options here. Okay, let's see what the yaw is now. So that's the 100% yaw. That's absolutely as fast as it's gonna go. And it's already getting that little bit of roll tilt like these two motor designs do because they don't have any, uh, remember, roll vertical stabilization motors. So let's go forward, full yaw to the right. And let's just do some circles and see if it hits the bottom. Wow. It's really not changing any more than a couple inches of elevation, guys. This is amazing. <laughs> Man, leaps and bounds uh, more stable than a lot of the drones. Probably any of them with two motors like this that I've ever tested. Very, very, very good. And I like how it's always in depth lock. You don't have to worry about turning it off or on. So wherever you put that thing up or down, it will just stay there. It seems like it's going to take a while, guys, to get used to this, like, slide thumb control. Because it's just like a little pad for each of your fingers. But, man, I just can't get over how good this thing controls. So that's medium lights. Let's boost the lights up to maximum. And that's maximum brightness. Let's go ahead and turn around this way here real quick. And, yeah, those are pretty bright. Definitely bright enough. It's just so smooth. Man. This is what I'm talking about, guys. You see how the thumbsticks are just like these two slide panels. Let's bring it forward here. Letting off, and it's just kind of coasting in, okay? It won't stop super fast on its own. Okay, so this little guy here, this is supposed to be able to pitch it up and down. So let's try it. I'm going to push it up. Wow. Is it working? Yes, it is. Look at this. That's so awesome. That's like the maximum pitch. It looks like that's at our like 45 degree. But look at that. It's just holding that right there. Moving back a little bit. Kind of the nature of the beast. Let me try to go forward a bit. Wow. 
Very, very good job though with the two motors up top only. Let's see if we can turn it while it's in this pitch mode. Yep. And it's smooth too. A little bit of rock just from that roll, not having any stabilization in the roll, but we can move very slow forward. Good. Some of the drones don't have this type of slow movement like this. It's either on or off. So that's good. Let's come back. Let's try to go fast backwards. Maximum speed, but it's holding that pitch. That's great. I think that's our maximum. So that's the max it can pitch up, guys. Here's full stick forward while it's looking out of the water. So that's it, the 45 degree pitch. I'm gonna start pushing this button down. I'm just clicking it one by one. And you see how it's going like maybe five degrees each time? And that should be all the way down, wow. Look how stable this thing is. Gotta be careful over the water here. Hold on to this thing tight, right? I'm just loving how precision this thing is. So I can go just very, very slowly. It's about as slow as I can go. And remember, I'm all maxed out on my, uh, my rates too, but I can still go very slow with these thumb pads. And as long as you're really just controlling your thumbs, look at this. So check out the video, guys, on the, uh, the phone. A little bit choppy you see that it's just like really notchy not smooth at all so they need to work on their video streaming maybe the iphone ipad will be a little smoother but this is a um, one plus 6t phone android let's see if we can go forward and turn at the same time yeah you can still do it okay that works pretty well i am impressed the vatix you have a couple of things you need to work out this is full stick forward, pitched at 45 degrees. It's keeping its perfect height from the bottom, just a few inches. Full reverse. Went up a little, but it's going back down. And it's just maintaining that depth perfectly. That is just fantastic. Okay, now we're centered back in center here. And definitely can go a lot faster when it's at zero degree pitch, right? That's full yaw and full stick forward. But this one is very proportional. Look at this. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna let it be for a second and watch this uh, slow reverse movement. Just barely putting any reverse in. See that? So I can go very slow. Let's put in a little bit of forward. Just very, very slow. There we go. So you can go as slow and as fast as you want. And you can also turn. Let's just cut out all forward and backward movement and do a very, very slow yaw. Yep, so you can go slow. That's me turning it very slow. And that's all the way fast on the yaw. And this thing is so quiet. Usually you can hear them under the water. Can you guys hear that? I can't hear anything. Can't hear any motors or nothing. So a pro there too. Very quiet for the sea creatures. Not going to bother any sea creatures. That's fantastic. One of the main features of this one. Let's put this thing in the water. This is it, guys. A tether. Okay, never done this before. Is it going to float? Keep in mind, guys, this thing has a solar panel on top. Check that out. So it's actually going to charge this. I'm not sure if it charges that, but it's going to charge at least the buoy. Okay, it's in the water. You know what I want to do is I want to tie this thing off. Still working. I want to tie this thing off and have it pull this thing around. Right there. I'll lock it off right there. See how that works? I won't let any more out. Forward go. <laughs> there it is. Pulling the buoy. It keeps switching out of... Uh, keeps switching out of its medium beam because I'm getting too high. There we go. Go 
go a little bit lower there okay let's pull it around see how this thing behaves now remember it has most of the tether on the spool right now so see how look at the yeah it's going to sink if you're going too fast see that it's almost underwater now and i'd imagine if you get going too fast uh where it's locking off now that's the way it's going to collapse down so if you had too much current it's going to turn that thing off so you may want to put that little locker on this side so that when you pull it it doesn't collapse the antenna down because that turns the whole unit off once that antenna goes down Let's see if we can get it to do it anyway it's not closing down though at least I'm just pulling it all over the place <laughs> trying to get it to close so when you do have more of the cable off right it's gonna be more buoyant it's kind of weighing it down a bit okay guys so I had to change the battery in my hat cam I just ran out of power and I figured I'd go ahead and try the iPad right now because went ahead and got in touch with uh, Novatix the company that makes the Mito and they said that they had the Apple app available on their website so I went ahead and downloaded that it's not approved for the Apple store yet so keep in mind guys this is kind of like beta everything right now so it's probably going to be better by the time this thing gets out on market I have the iPad Air 2 here I'm going to go ahead and uh, start the application I have everything powered on just as normal and plug in the lightning connector to the iPad everything connects just the same as Android press connect here my Android phone was was quite choppy in the FPV so we're gonna see if maybe the iPad is better since this is in beta you know we can give it a little bit of slack there so let's just kind of see how the iPad is looks like it's kind of upside down there we go okay let's just kind of move the Mito and look how much better that is okay so this is leaps and bounds better than my Android phone look at that latency is better and also there's not that choppy lag you know as I was getting on my uh, OnePlus 6T. So just something to note. Let's go ahead and put this thing in the water and do a test with the iPad and see if it's any better. Let's just give this a try. And what we're doing right now is we're just really seeing if it was in fact just kind of a glitch, uh, a bug actually in the Android firmware. And check that out, guys. So I'm gonna move the head around and right now I'm going to let you look at the iPad. And that is leaps and bounds smoother than the Android. So I got to say that it just really depends on the device. So it is working good. We'll let it run for a little bit so the electronics kind of heat up in there and see if it gets more laggy and stuff. But for right now, it seems like it's doing really, really good. 45 degree angle here. Okay. And then we'll go forward again. Yep. Okay, so leaps and bounds better as far as smoothness. Go ahead and let you look at the iPad screen, and that's much smoother. It's the less lag and way, way smoother, so that looks great. Let's bring it on back here. Let's try to go backwards. Full speed. This is full speed. Pulling the buoy. You can see how it's tilting a little bit to the left. So that's where this is going to get influenced. If it is kind of... Uh, pulling the buoy around at its angle it's gonna rock a little bit to the left and right roll go ahead and angle down to neutral position zoom around here for a little bit heat up the components okay doing very very good this thing again is just amazing precision control I did voice my opinion to Novatix that a lot of people probably won't like these little uh, thumb pads, these slider pads. They're probably going to want like joysticks. Um, and they said that is like a big concern to a lot of people. So maybe they'll improve things. Okay, really quick. I saw on the iPad just a little bit of freeze in the FPV there when I was going around fast. So let's keep zooming around at speed and I'm just going to keep watching the iPad taking a close look at it while I'm in the pool here and you know Wi-Fi isn't impervious to glitches and pixelation so we just want to keep a really good um, eye on this right here 
I am seeing the occasional pixelation a little bit more so. And since we're moving fast, you know, it is getting a little bit blurry on the screen, but not that bad. Way so, it's like basically 100% better than my Android phone. So if you do have an iPad, this is the older iPad 2 Air, guys. And it seems to be handling this okay. So far, pretty darn good. Okay. Oh, we had kind of a long freeze there. I was seeing like a one, two, maybe a three second freeze on the FPV there. And it's good to kind of go around a bit so we can really see, you know, how this thing starts to heat up and reacts as we're going full throttle, zooming around, lights are on full blast. You know, you don't want to just do a simple little test and not really test everything. And of course, we're going to do a longer test in the ocean. And that'll really be the test at depth and, you know, making it work harder in the current and stuff. So just a couple of little lag glitches, uh, freeze glitches in the FPV. And that's kind of the norm for these wireless buoys I've seen. And, you know, some of the users in the uh, Facebook testing group that I'm in right now have mentioned that they're getting a thousand feet from this controller right here to the buoy so that's a bonus right there and we're gonna have to test that in the ocean on a calm a calm day for sure tilt down maybe 20 degrees so we can really get a good view of the pool there from a distance and I kind of want to zoom around let's try to go a little bit slow and I'll have my iPad up in my hat cam just really looking at it and just seeing if we get any freezing See, we got a good view of the bottom here. So if you say you wanted to scan the bottom of the water of whatever you're doing, this will be a good indication of how it looks. Of course, I'm not recording my iPad right now. In the, the ocean test, I will. I'll record my iPad and also have the high def up so you can really see how it looks for me and also the video on the sub. But just the occasional little artifacts and glitching, I'm really glad I tested this iPad because it just makes the experience a hundred times better. Okay, full speed ahead with the pitch down at about 20-25%. And I'm just looking for the FPV freezing. There was a freeze. Okay, for about two seconds it froze on the iPad screen. The occasional frame drop. Well, not that bad. Let's bring it back to the surface and uh, I guess we'll do a quick little pros and cons, guys. Bring it in here. Let's bring this thing out of the water again. So, so far so good on the buoy. And you know, when I was talking to them about the application for where to get it for the iPad for Apple they did say that they're working on I guess an attachment for the bottom that is gonna make this buoy more buoyant so like maybe like a little life raft something you can kind of you know clip onto the bottom okay anyway a final pros and cons for this pool test uh, I've got to say Android really sucked as far as the FPV but Apple world of difference it's working as good as can be expected as you can see the video is still nice and smooth there with just that up to half a second lag time up to i guess that's 500 milliseconds since this only has of course the two vertical motors forward and back uh, it is going to be susceptible to a little bit of that roll roll wiggle and when this thing does start pulling on the tether uh, it is going to, you're going to feel that, especially when you're pitched up or down in that 45 degree pitch hold. We'll definitely be testing that in the ocean and really see how stable it is. But for having the amount of motors it does have, man, they have just such a good algorithm for this thing. This algorithm they have is what other drone manufacturers need to, um, to get because there was none of that buck and bronco, you know, how some of the other, uh, subs, even in still water like this, if they're trying to stabilize their horizon, they'll do this buck once in a while like this. And it's really irritating, but this one had none of that. Just perfectly, perfectly smooth. And that's probably the best point of this sub is 
how precision it is and also that it has this floating buoy with a solar panel that's great so a couple things they can improve especially the android application but of course that's still in beta testing everything's in beta test on the app so I'm not gonna really knock them too much for that. I definitely wanna be using this. It's just that to use this, this is the only iPad I can use right now. I'm thinking about getting the mini, but I don't even think the mini will fit in their bracket. And that's the problem is this controller, you see how that thing's kind of wiggling around? <laughs> A little bit precarious putting the iPad in this controller mount, or actually the uh, phone mount. It's meant for a phone. And the only way I'm able to do this is to have this 3D printed extension bracket and it's a little bit precarious so i'm going to need to be careful not to break it a few more videos to come don't miss the ocean video guys because that will really tell us how good this thing is in some chop and some current a lot of the subs i review are great in this calm pool but once you get them in the water it's a whole different story dealing with you know the t pulling on the tether and how well they deal with that some chop some current so we're gonna put this one through the same test. Again, links to everything I'm using in this video down below, including the Mito, of course, and I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.